Some of these rumors, they come, they go pretty quickly. But one name that keeps coming up as part of a spider team is... Uh, we are still on the hunt for all members of this Weapon X team. As you can see, we are here on Madripoor looking for clues. Where is the power broker? Where is Sam Wilson? I think they have some information on where we can find Omega Red. We got some prediction on where these two are in this video. Also, rumors, the Eternals, are they in and a Thunderbolts out? We got Drew to explain, and we're taking a look at the rest of your questions from the mailbag on Discord, guys. So if you're ready for it, Find that like button and let's go smash it. So let's get to the first question, which is actually not a question. It's just a comment about something we're talking about the live stream on the morning of the 4th of October. The unlock for Omega Red will be five stars based on his image in the far left of the home screen, showing five yellow stars under his picture, right? I think it'd be similar to Doc Ock and the legendary Jubilee. So needing five Secret Avengers, Winter Soldier, Nick Fury to unlock a five-star Omega Red, six-star tunes to get six-star, and so on and so on. Yes, you are exactly right. And that was described in a blog post, boom, on September uh, 17th, 2021. If we scroll all the way down past this kid, we see the unlock method for Omega Red. And yes, it is five stars for that five-star version of Omega Red. You'll also need a few other requirements because yes, this is a mythic legendary character. So you'll You'll also need your characters at level 65, gear tier 12, and ISO class level 3 for that 5 star unlock. And for the 6 star unlock, you'll need your characters at 6 star gear 13, ISO class level 4, and at tier 8, which is the 7 star unlock, you'll need 7 stars on your characters, gear tier 14 at ISO class level 5. And those are the requirements for uh, Omega Red. But without further ado, let's get to, let's give a big shout out to one of the sponsors of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Hey. Hey, you. I see you there. I see you there watching me. Well, I want you to listen to me because I want to tell you about one of the best free-to-play hero collector games out there for your mobile device or PC. It's Raid Shadow Legends. And if you want to download Raid right now, make sure you use the link in the description. Now, to collect these heroes in Raid, you're going to want to come to one of my favorite areas, the Summoning Portal. It's like a box of chocolates in here. You never know what you're going to get. Some good, some bad. And your legendary and epic champions, they are the best champions of the game, but it can be kind of hard to get. So I'm gonna break down the top five rare champions that you could get from the summoning portal. Coming in at number five is War Maiden. Bellower makes the list at number four. Aethel is a great starter champion and she is coming at number three. Number two is one of my favorites, Apothecary. And the best rare champion in raid is one of the best boss killers, Cold Heart. And this month, raid's got a non-stop schedule of Halloween events and activities. We're talking big rewards, tournaments against other players, and special events to get some brand new legendary champions. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And if you're a new player and wanna get a huge head start right now, all you need to do is click on the link in the description or scan my QR code, and in your account, you will receive the epic champion, Chonoru. She excels in the Force Keep. You'll also get 200,000 silver, one experience boost, one energy refill, and an ancient star, so you can summon even more awesome champions when you get in game. And all of that awesome treasure is gonna be waiting for you in your inbox right here, but don't wait. It's only available for the next 30 days. It's only for new players. And yes, it is that easy, guys. Click on the link in the description, get your free stuff, and I'll see you in game. So big thanks to the folks over at Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna check that out, make sure you use that link in the description. But back to the questions. Hey, Valley, greetings from Jeremy. Greetings from Texas, brother. Hope you're doing well. Can you tell me who the black curl girl in front of Silver Samurai and then loot loading screen is? Boom, let's go to the loading screen. In front of Silver Samurai, this black curl girl. Doesn't look like her, but it is X-23. I think we did get confirmation of the devs from that in the Envoy chat, but I don't know if that was made publicly, but yes, it is X-23, brother. So uh, yes, that put put uh, let, let the rumors begin on what that could mean for the game. Yo, Valley, I'm currently a law student and have been studying the federal rules of evidence. These new character kits seem more complicated than anything I'm learning in school. Oh, you got that right. That's kind of how these hero collector games go as they progress. And we're in year three. So yeah, they're, they're going to get pretty complex if 
if uh, previous Hero Collector games are any indication of what these kits are going to look like. But do you think the devs have backed themselves in the corner with kit complication? Or do you think they can release new characters or they are very basic kits that still keep up with the power leap? So a lot of the power leap is based on their kits, but some of it, a lot of it is going to be based on their base stats. So I think they could still re re release characters without these overly complicated kits, but they would need to have the base stats that line up with these newer characters. All these post Silver Surfer characters have some very crazy base stats. So they'll need to they'll need to uh, do do something with the base stats. But yeah, I think I think they could still have some pretty basic non-complicated kits if they wanted to the question is if they want to do that so hopefully we'll see hey valley i feel like the security and engineering buffs are so outdated these days defense up defense down isn't all that exciting yeah uh, how would you feel about if it applied safeguard or trauma for a turn instead? Uh, maybe down the road. I think I think I, I think I actually like the outdated, boring bonuses of defense up and defense down. That way, when I'm on offense and attacking, I, I'm not stuck too much. I feel that uh, I, you know defense. You're supposed to get around it. I don't think making defense harder is the better thing. I mean. The, Heroes for Hire is not fun, and that is a hard, hard defense team. So I'd rather make them make the defense easier. I, I don't know, or just maybe not easier, but keep it the same. Uh, and then maybe down the road, if we need more defense stuff, says make make the bonuses for security and engineering, trauma, safeguard, some some complicated things like that. But I I I, I don't like I don't like war defense too much. So I'd, I'd rather not have it be too strong. So that's my opinion. Let me know. Let me know in the comments, guys. Am I alone on this, or do you, or would you also rather not see this come to the game? All right, next question. Marvel Strike Force Alliance might consider creating a new alliance from scratch. Could you give me the opinion on the pros and cons to this possibility, as well as your recommendation whether to do it or not? So. I guess the uh, if we look at the pros first, I guess if you're not in control of the alliance and you have some toxic members there, you don't disagree, you don't agree with the leadership there. I think at that point it could possibly beneficial to create your own alliance if you have enough players that want to play with you and your alliance leading. I think a lot of it is going to be some downsides though. Uh, starting a new alliance, you're not getting all those Star Tech bonuses. Uh, you know, is the recruiting kind of hard nowadays and if uh, if you're not getting those bonuses it might be hard to go with a some of the harder raids like a doom one or a doom two for that teal gear so i think i think there's a lot of downsides plus i guess i guess the one upside though is that you'll be in a lower war ranking so um you'll get easier matchups but again the flip side of that is you're not getting as many rewards so i, I think i think if you have control of the alliance though it's probably worth staying maybe get the alliance to where you want it um you might have to kick a few people recruit a few new people that match the dynamic of your alliance whether it be super competitive or super casual or somewhere in between based on different game modes so I think it would probably better to, you know, find a new alliance or or an alliance that someone is about to leave like a shell and they're like, ah, we don't care about this here. You guys could take it over. I think that would be a more beneficial way. I know it might be hard to find nowadays, but uh, I would look to do that. Someone that's uh, getting rid of a shell that doesn't want that. Uh, that way you get your Stark Tech bonuses. You get some of these uh, other alliances uh, uh, bonuses. And if you are wanting those war rewards, maybe you won't be as competitive in these battles. But at least initially, those rewards will be a lot better. So that would be my benefit. Uh, if, if I'm missing a lot, because honestly, I'm not an alliance leader. There may be a lot of uh, pros and cons that I'm missing. Let me know in the comments, though, guys. All right. Yo. Bally, what comes on today after maintenance? Uh, after maintenance comes a lot of new bugs. Even even with the 5.7.1, there's still some things that are not working properly that we will discuss a little later in this video. But yeah, after maintenance, bugs comes after maintenance. <laughs> hey, Bally. Hey, buddy. So the two new raid teams that build up, New Warriors and Secret Avengers. I've decided to put my resources into the New Warriors since I won't be unlocking Omega Red. On that note, what are the T4 possibilities for new warriors? I got cloak and dagger passive ability, but not sure what to do after that. Also, I've got death pools basic done. So for this, I think we're going to have to go into the game and check out uh, what I have on all of my new warriors and my secret Avengers. And the last question is for rating. What other two characters would you like to use to fill up the two blank spots? I'm currently using Dr. Doom, Silver Surfer. But if you think another two would be better, I'd like to know other options. So I actually like both of those choices as the fourth and fifth, Dr. Doom and Silver Surfer. But 
I think that if you have Adam Warlock, he's going to be a little more effective than Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom adds a lot of damage, but Adam Warlock with his stun, with his with his ability block, and that he could come back to life, I think that's going to give you a little more control in that node. I would experiment, though, if you have a really strong Doom, uh, that may be better than a weak Adam. Or if you don't have Adam, I think Doom is the Doom and Surfer are the next best two. But let's take a look at the T4s for Cloak and Dagger. Let's start and see what I have. So I actually have the passive for Dagger here. And I did the ultimate which what the ultimate does is more piercing for all enemies if cloak is an ally you're getting more damage to all enemies and i think uh, down the road this will be a very good one uh because of the damage maybe not at this low four star level but eventually i think this is going to be the key to those uh mystic lanes and doom so this is that would be a good one to do and i also did this special more piercing to primary and secondary targets clearing all positive effects instead of three positive effects that's why i think that's a really good one uh, clearing all and Instead of three can be game changing de depending on what node you're in depending on how many um, uh, debuffs you have on your team and then uh, chaining as well the four adjacent targets instead of three adjacent targets so those are the ones that i like for dagger now the ones that i like for cloak pretty much the same thing the passive is a very good one you have this done it's gonna be it's it's a good one i would do that one initially the ultimate what that does is 50 percent more damage to all enemies which is the baseline of a of a aoe attack for a t4 but it gets a little better if daggers and ally goes 60 percent piercing to all enemies and if you guys are newer what piercing does is it ignores the armor of the target and then the other one i like is this special here 100 percent damage to the primary target so really good and applying slow offense down defense down for two turns instead of one i think all of those are very very valuable and i think all of those will give you some value uh they've given me value but depend you may play a little differently so the the value that these give you may be a little different than than i'm getting but i i like all of those everything but the basics on all these characters if you guys have any other recommendations or are doing anything a little different let me know in the comments moving on though valley of blind hey bud two quick ones as a new player i don't really understand and i haven't seen a ton of resources in how important is team order in arena my team is captain sam gamora moon dragon kestrel and nebula in that order uh i let, i would actually put gamora on the other end switch out gamora with nebula uh nebula has a lot of um uh, what is that the dodges that she does the evades that she does uh she and kind of like gamora if she dies she's gonna come back to life so i place nebula next to gamora now i did a video a long time ago on team placement uh damage dealers on the back line that's not entirely how marvel strike force works i know uh on some games the front line the back line makes a difference in marvel strike force it doesn't make too much of a difference but what does make a difference is the placement of your character so this was a video that i did way back in 2018 look at me back there oh my goodness look how times have changed but this is this pretty much still applies so you get your front row your back row you have a bunch of different types of attacks so an adjacent attack one is going to be adjacent to two two is going to be adjacent to three two is adjacent to one and three but three even though they're they're not going to be adjacent because there's no character right here you could fit 10 characters on the field at a time if we scroll forward a little bit uh we could see where some of these characters uh, will be filling in there we go so uh sometimes you can call more than one or you can have more than five characters on the field with some summons maybe in some raids so if we look at this b is going to be adjacent to three two a c and uh one so all of these characters are adjacent to it and uh, so the adjacency matters where you place it it does matter and if we look at all this stuff uh you'll see there now the video like i said it's a little outdated but the information is still there so i'm gonna put a link to that old video in the comments but yes it, it the order does matter i would switch out gamora with moon dragon in your example but uh, the damage dealers don't need to be in the back line. Usually you place uh, one of the tanks at the ends here. Uh, that way they get targeted. And then the adjacent target, you want either the two or the four, depending on where you place your tank next to them with, with some kind of stealth or evades or something like that. Uh, that way on chain attacks, 
uh, is it's not going to continue to change to two and three and one and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I go over it a lot more in detail in this video. I'm going to put a link to it there. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it still makes sense to you. And hopefully the quality of the video is not that bad that you can still watch it. If so, let me know. And maybe I'll uh, do another video on this to explain this for new players. All right. But next question. Hey, Valley, what do you think about MSF adding a height and weight mechanic to the game? I know in Marvel Conscious of Champions, sometimes the characters have buffs and debuffs based on their size compared to the opponent. I I think it would be uh, add some usability teams like mobile gamers favorite like pim tech if they did damage to larger characters or smaller for stature or brother what if blob gained mass throughout the battle and turn it into and in turn gain health thanks for all the game content keep on smashing all right i like i like this suggestion here uh if it's implemented correctly i could think it could add a lot of depth to the game and for those bigger characters it would be more important to show you know how hulk is tiny in Marvel Strike Force. Well, uh, maybe his character model is tiny, but they could give him something big like this to make him a, a weight, a heavily weighted character in this game. So I, I think it could be cool if done right. Now, again, this is scopely we're dealing with. I don't know if this could be implemented correctly without a ton of bugs being added to the game. So I might have a little hesitation there, but yeah, I think if this was done correctly, this could add a lot of depth to the game and hopefully not unnecessarily uh just just adding more depth to do more stuff right valley flying can you pass some information onto the devs about the beta gamma alpha orbs add some new characters into them please add a new character has not been added since shatterstar it really needs a buff new characters added i 100 agree with this those are the most boring orbs it was so fun back in the day when we actually were raiding and getting shards for thanos and deadpool but i guess the devs thought there that was too generous and the player were too happy and they weren't making enough money with that so that went away and these orders have been kind of crappy since then once in a while they make some changes but i think they're based on certain tags of the characters i can't remember what they were off the top of my head but i know what like one is brawlers and there's a cosmic thing uh but yeah it's all based on certain tags and sometimes they forget to go back and add these characters so if they have the tags they should be added to those orbs but uh yeah sometimes the devs they, they make so many bugs that they forget about some of these uh, newer things that they're adding. So uh, if there's if, if you guys remember the tags, let me know in the comments because I can't remember them off the top of my head. But if there's any characters missing, let me know and I will pass it on to devs and hopefully they will uh, update these orbs to get the every character with those certain tags added to these orbs. All right, next question. Valley is a new breakpoint recommendation for leveling characters. I know a long time people are recommending 65, 12, 664 on abilities for most characters, taking only some characters 71 and even a smaller subset to 75 or 80. Similar for gear tiers. I was hearing to bring most students to gear tier 12 and to only put orange gear if they're going to 14. Is there a convenient graph that shows the power stat increase with each level? All right, so a bunch of questions here. So uh, the reason that people were holding off on going to gear tier 13 is because of those mini uniques, things like alien spores and ballistic weave, things like those still very hard to come by. They have not uh, decreased the bottlenecks on those things. The only place that I think that you could get them on certain orbs or in the war store and supply store. So still very rare. So I think I would still keep it with that gear tier 12 recommendation. Now at gear tier uh, 70, they get some stats, but at 71, and 74 they're getting a lot more uh, i believe it's damage stats that uh, go with them or or maybe it's focus and resistance i'm remembering that all wrong but uh, 71 and 74 they get a lot of bonuses 75 not too much except for being able to take them to the next gear tier so uh my my recommendation at 12 still stands i think the new minimum level you need characters to be at a usable level and of course this would vary depending on what kind of game content you're trying to uh clear but i think 75 is the new minimum to take characters up to just to get to that uh star level or that uh, power level and then if you want to get them up to 14 at level 75 you're gonna have that option as well so i would say level 75 and then abilities i would keep it at 6664 unless you have a ton of t4s just uh just that you're hoarding but uh, most most players don't have a lot of t4s so i would keep it on here if there's special t4s that i would go ahead and do those but yeah I, th I think the new recommendation for myself would be 75 i'm gonna stick with gear tier 12 because those mini uniques are still hard to get you know so until they make them farmable or easier to get in a more reliable manner i would still stay with uh, 12. you don't want to be using mini uniques on a character that uh, might need the same thing that's coming out very soon 
uh abilities that would keep it there but that's that's the only thing i would change raise the level but keep the gear there for those sorts of levels and if you want to go and check out the power stats increase the best place to do that is boom right here msf.gg let's let's go take a look at the site here uh, if we wanted to take a look at the stats for death pool we'll go click on death pool the first screen is gonna be her um her kit here but if we move this down and take a look at her gear and stats this is where you could kind of play and see what the power level would be for this character so if we wanted to be a five star character and maybe four red stars level 85 let's let's go down to level 80 and see what the power level and all that stats would be you know you could remove the gear tiers maybe gear tier 14 calculate power boom about 96k power so that's around where these characters are and you can see all the stats and how they're affected see if you want to actually put the stuff into those characters but uh, let me see if there's any other questions here with the new level cap increase and gear tier 16 in the game are there new recommended stopping points so uh, yes I, I think i answered that one i know i can look up into what your characters on msf.gg but i'm looking for a more general trend recommendation most, most efficient use of my resources thanks for everything you do to the community all right so you did mention that part i guess i should have read the whole question first but if we go to uh, msf.gg go back to there and look at meta report uh you can kind of see some t4 trends some iso 8 confidence that you can kind of scroll through and look for there uh but yeah i think i think uh, there's there's not really a uh trend i think a lot of it is going to be based on usage that's why and every care every player uh uses their characters different some are more war focused some are more raid focused some just go hard in every aspect of the game so i don't know if uh, you could have a recommendation for every character because things change and things change in the meta so quickly so uh yeah you got the right idea there but i think i think uh 75 is the new uh minimum for characters all right next question though in doom one the mutant bosno with the dad bros was easy when you clone long shot it was i did that you could fully auto it with two long shots one shatter star sinister and uh that's pretty much it full auto for a long time i couldn't st i could just target him and auto now it seems the node is buffed or something other change on uh, how the node works made a crap shoot uh as to whether it will or will not work any idea what the changes could cause the issue so uh the first possibility is exactly like you said maybe there was a stealth buff uh other thing that i've noticed as i start leveling up characters i would expect it to work better in the raids but for sometimes when i when i upgrade these characters and they get stronger it actually makes it harder on the raid nodes i don't i don't know why that is maybe it's just bad rng i was thinking it's because i was killing the enemies too fast and the cooldowns are not getting set up for the next node and that's making it harder but uh that's those are just theories uh maybe the stark tech bug is back and if you weren't playing back in the day when the stark tech bug was around basically if we went to a, a pvp battle like uh sort of blitz sort of uh war you would get the stark tech of your opponents and that would be based uh, going towards all of your opponents all of your enemies even in the pve content so maybe that's back i don't know i i, I haven't done doom one for a while we've done we've been on doom two so i don't get that node and axemen actually work pretty good in doom two so uh i don't know i don't know how long you guys are gonna be doing doom one maybe maybe your axemen are already good so talk to your alliance but yeah, I don't I don't know what happened. I haven't done that in a while. It worked it worked really really good. But uh, I've I've always had the mutants last. I've always been in that far left lane. So the mutants is the last node on that lane. So I, I didn't get a chance to do that battle very often to fully test this. All right, gold pull from a red star or for silver samurai only worth four red stars since when? And what's up from NYC? Pull the gold drop uh for red stars for silver samurai but only got a four star what's going on here so the devs did say that this was a bug they said it was a visual bug it really sucks excuse me it really sucks now the devs did say that this was a bug it was a visual bug but unfortunately it's it's the kind of bug that gets your hopes up and then kind of crushes it so as you can see uh this was submitted in the fails the msf fails channel as you can see three star three red stars for silver samurai but a yellow border instead of what should be a blue border so yeah bugs but uh, uh you know unfortunately there wasn't uh, any damage done so probably no compensation coming for this other than just some annoyance guys all right greetings from ontario canada watch your builds all the time thank you brother all right and catch you on twitch when i can first time asking a question i've been asked a few times it's been asked a few times but i am about to start the legendary nodes in dark dimension 4 slowly making progress on the dreaded node 12 i have 
Adam Warlock, Ma, Jubilee, Dr. Octopus, Ready. Was wondering what T4s you would recommend for Jubilee and Adam Warlock. Uh, I have all of theirs. Not sure who would benefit, which ones would benefit from most from Doc Ock and Ma. So I'm not sure either. I don't know these off the top of my head. So let's go back in game and look at the kits for Doc Ock and Ebony Ma and see which are the best T4s. Uh, was wondering what T4s. Oh, I read that part and... I'll be getting Omega Red on his release and may be an option depending on timing. So if you have any recommendation for a different lineup, as I have all act, um, legendaries unlocked and I'm pretty close to gear 15. So uh, obviously if you have Phoenix, she worked pretty good because of the percent based damage. But uh, I don't know if you want to spend a lot of resource considering that she's not very valuable outside of Dark Dimension. So uh, as far as the T4s for Ebony Maw, let's go take a look at those in game. Boom, here he is, Ebony Maw. And as you can see, I did all of them. But some of them were because he's on the Black Order team. So anyone that just affects the Black Order, uh, like this one, gaining 10% resistance, Black Order gains more resistance. Probably not. Probably one you could skip. So we don't need the ultimate there or the passive there. Per Black Order ally, which you're, if you're using a Dark Dimension 4 on a non-Black Order team, that's not going to be helping any. So you can skip the passive. You can skip the ultimate unless you're planning to use Ebony Maw later on a Black Order team. This is a good one, though. Applying defense up for two turns. So I still do this special here. Getting those uh, extra turns of defense up. And then more piercing. Bonus attacking three times instead of two. I think you could skip this. Maw is not really known for his damage. I did this a while ago when I was heavily using that full Black Order team on Arena. But uh, looking back... Back, I would say just the special right now for Maw. And if we go to Dr. Octopus, he has a lot. I think I've T4'd all of his abilities as well. But let's take a look at them and see if there's a uh, one. So war, these are all war bonuses. You could skip his passive if you're strictly focused on uh, Dark Dimension. This one I think is a good one. His ultimate, more damage to all enemies. Like I said earlier, my baseline for a T4 as far as the AoE damage attack is 50%. This is a little bit above it. So I think this is a good one. This also looks very good. You're going to go for three charges instead. This may not be very valuable in Dark Dimension 4. You're going to get uh, some bonuses for the summon as well. So I think if you're just focused on Dark Dimension 4, just do the ultimate for Doc Ock and just do the special for Ebony Maw. That is it, and yeah, hopefully that helps. I, I like your lineup, though. I'm, I'm kind of in the camp that I want to conserve resources and not bring up a lot of characters that I may or may not lead, need. So uh, any characters that you're thinking of bringing in, any legendary characters that you're thinking of using in Doom 1 or Doom 2, whatever Doom Raid you're in, you could safely bring those characters up because you're going to be using them. But if you're just bringing up for Dark Dimension 4, I would hold off, especially at this point in the game. A lot of older characters work well in Dark Dimension 4, but not... You're not going to use them a lot in the game. So I would I would just uh, work on a few of those. All right. Hey, Valley Friends. Greetings from South Africa. Greetings from the USA, brother. I have a hot topic of conversations to bring up to you. And I hope you will bear with me for the long messages and attack pic attached pictures. I believe Death Pulse passive is still not working correctly. Even after 5.7, the patch 5.7. I've uh, been in contact with support and repeatedly had unsatisfactory responses. Her kit states on enemy death, heal self for 10% of max health and attack the most injured enemy for 300% damage plus clear three positive effects. Patch point seven fixed her passive to a large extent, but it's still missing one feature. If she kills an enemy with her passive, it does not trigger attack. I've noticed that as well. I was thinking that's just how the game works because usually with other characters, passives don't really trigger other passives to work. Uh, that's That's been with a few different characters but uh this let's, let's see what the response is the text is not ambi is not ambiguous and enemy dies or a passive should trigger if they change the in-game text instead of functionality we're back to square one with them selling the kit and not delivering it please find attached files in various conversations i have attempted so uh there's a long conversation here but from from what i understand about other passives they are not supposed to trigger other passives so let's see what the devs say. Meanwhile, to clarify, Death Pool's passive ability mechanics, please know one of her changes states that she won't trigger a bonus attack when she personally kills an enemy unit. Our team will be working to update the functionality to match the ability description and allow Death Pool to trigger her bonus attack if she herself kills an enemy character. You can visit our previous blog post and all that stuff. Hey there. This does not answer my question about Death Pool's passive. I know that her normal attacks now trigger her passive. That has been corrected in patch 5.7. But what I'm saying is her passive doesn't trigger her passive. And this, this is still wrong. Text on enemy death, meaning 
that when she kills someone her with her passive attack, it should trigger another attack for the next character. For example, it's Deadpool's turn. She uses her basic uh, kills two out of six enemies, thus two passive attacks are triggered. Let's say she kills both enemies with one shot each. Now two enemies have died, meaning her passive should be uh, triggered on two more remaining characters. Uh, hello there. Thanks, Inevitable. I'm writing in. This is Jason. Glad to hear. I wonder which Jason this is. Glad to hear uh, you want to know how Death Pool's passive works. Apologize. This is one not made clear on the previous tickets, so let me clear things up. To clarify, it's indicated on our website that Death Pool's uh, passive can only be triggered by her special, basic, and ultimate ability. For more information, please visit the blog post on our website. It's written in blog fixes. It says Death Pool's passive ability, come, Death Comes for All, will now prompt Death Pool to attack if she deals a final blow to an opponent using her basic, special, or ultimate ability. And that's that's how I've noticed other passes in the, uh, the past. So I don't know if that's been clearly stated, but the devs have mentioned that passive don't uh, trigger other passives in the past. So this this may be working as intended, but I get what you're saying here, brother. Uh, you know, you, you, this is not what we are sold. And I agree, this should be stated in every like passive attack. I, I, I think the devs think that, oh, it's understood by the community that passives don't trigger passives, but I don't think the community understands that. Uh, I, I was wondering why wasn't she doing that, but then I remembered the previous conversation. So uh, yeah, I agree. It, it, it's it's kind of scummy to not include this previously. This is not what we're sold, but I, I think this is how it's supposed to work. But if you if you uh, have any other information that would contradict that, let me know. Because, yes, I, I love criticizing Scopely when they deserve it. All right, next question. Do you think with the rework to Wolverine and Sabretooth, they will make the teams back to where they were a few months ago? Or do you think that X-Men will have a better well, is will be better to have an offense again with Wolverine and would Sabretooth be better for Marauders or just keep her with another character like Minerva so I think for right now this is going to be a good raid team or next uh, raid team a war offense team that you're going to need for countering heroes for hire I think you're going to need to keep them on that team now down the road who knows what's going to happen because there's already rumors of Omega Red getting off of this team and going on to a team with Apocalypse so this team probably going to be good for the next few months at least until we get more heroes for higher counters but uh down the road i think they are going to be split up but uh, in the meantime though i don't think you place wolverine back on uncanny x-men i don't think that you place uh the saber tooth back in the marauders i like minerva on the marauders and i guess with the uncanny x-men the best the better option is uh, either storm or psylocke but yeah down the road i think you're already going to have to uh split them up but hopefully uh there's more i mean there have been more rumors of mutants coming but so hopefully uh these these work well with these characters and give them give them a place in the game all right hey valley lore oh love from india long time i've been waiting for only one update which is we should be able to purchase the premium pass for 1580 cords which is worth the same dollars do you think we're gonna get some love from scopely in this i know a lot of other games have done this in the past as a way of the incentivized players to start that and to keep grinding it, would Scopely ever do this? No, I don't think they they would. Uh, I think I think that's a little too optimistic. Um, I, I like to be optimistic, but I also like to be realistic based on what Scopely's done in the past. And in the past, they haven't shown uh, to be the most generous with real world money stuff. So I would love that idea. I think the community would love it. I think it would up player engagement. I think it would generate more interest in the game. But yeah, I think Scopely's a little short sighted on uh, some of their decisions based just on short term monetization so yeah i don't i don't think they'll do this uh hey valley howdy from texas howdy back from texas brother i don't really care about building heroes for hire for war defense but i wanted to use shang chi for doom raids and uh, what t-force if any do you recommend for raid usage so for shang chi i i actually recommend two unless you're using shang chi on a full heroes for hire team like in the gamma raids like a lot of people do because uh they're they're really good in the gamma raids but i think without the full heroes for hire team there's gonna be a few t4s that are very good so let me uh go in and check out my heroes for hire team give you those recommendations where are they here they are boom let's get into the game shang chi we got three uh t4s on him now this one is pretty much uh, for war defense. You're going to get his crit chance increased by 20%, which is good. His block amount is going to go up. That's going to help you in raids and not just war defense. But so if, if that if that is important, that extra crit chance, then you do that. The rest of it is for the heroes for our higher allies. Now, this is a pretty decent one. 
100 125% damage to all allies like i said the baseline for this is 50% this is way above this plus it's reducing the speed bar of enemies by 5% so this is a no brainer especially with that 3 turn cooldown this is a very good one this is an important t4 for him we also have a lower turn cooldown but uh, you're going to get 60% damage to primary and secondary targets and filling speed bar by 50%. Let's ignore this war defense does because you're using him in uh, in the raids. So more damage than primary and secondary targets. I like that speed bar fill though. So for that reason, I would do that T4 as well. If you have other T4s that you can invest, more crit chance, more damage to primary targets, unless you have a lot of T4s and really, really investing in Shang-Chi in multiple game modes, I'll probably skip that. So my recommendations, definitely this ultimate. And if you want to get a little bit more, then you could do these special. But uh, yeah, you probably could skip the basics and the passive if you're going bare minimum for these uh for his t4s brother all right uh valley buddy greetings from the great white north it's snow today nice and it's super windy just wondering who's a good replacement for saber tooth but war defense for marauders i'm thinking magneto what placement would you have with marauders for that i actually still like um uh, minerva but if i was to use magneto i think my placement would be strife at the end just like uh you would use him mystique is gonna go next to strife because she goes goes into stealth sometimes that's going to stop some change sometimes she has some counters sometimes she has some evades that's just stop some change as well next i guess you got some options i think i would put emma in the middle because she's going to go into diamond form very early uh magneto and sinister could either be at that four or five spot i put sinister to end because i think he's a little more valuable after magneto does that big opening move pulling everybody together and blinding he, he kind of loses some value so that, that is the order that I would do in. So Strife, then Mystique, then Emma, then Magneto, then Sinister. Uh, but that's kind of based on how my power level of my characters is. Uh I have a very strong Sinister and a very strong Emma. Not very strong Magneto, not very strong Mystique, and Strife is okay beefy. If You, you might want to ch change the placement based on the uh, power level of all of your characters, but that's that's what I would do. All right, greetings from Independence, Missouri, brother. Greetings from Texas, brother. I have a question. Does Drew know what Spider-Man tunes will uh will from no way home or any sigma six members come in the game like ghost spider for example i don't know uh drew do you have any new spider rumors i know for a while there was mention of a gothic spider team that we really have no indication is coming to the game so what have you heard about the spiders brother hello there valley flying and the valley club i am drew the rimmer guy and yes there was talk of a spider gothic team coming earlier this year. And as you may know, no new spiders. So plans seem to change at a lightning pace at Scalpley. So some of these rumors, they come, they go pretty quickly. But one name that keeps coming up as part of a spider team is Spider Gwyn. And this seems to be why reworks may be coming for some of the current spider characters. All right, so if these rumors are true, Drew, it does look like we're getting new spider characters in a spider team, but no indication whether this will be related to the No Way Home movie. Now, I know there's a lot of upcoming movies, and I think the next one on the slate is The Eternals, and there's a lot of hype surrounding this. And I heard from the Valley Club this morning that Thunderbolts are probably going to be broken up. So does this mean that the Thunderbolts are out and the Eternals are back in? The Valley, I was also very excited about these Thunderbolts rumors, but they were still a little confusing at the time because of the timing of the Eternals movies. But it seems like the Eternals have gained the favor of the devs once more. Now, a while ago, I was told that the Eternals team would be a fall five person team but i'm also hearing the devs plan is to continue with these three person raid teams so lots of contradictory information coming in let me know your guesses on which it will be when it arrives in the game now i'm also hearing about this hellfire hellion team that could be coming with reworks to magneto and mystique yes i'm also hearing that the devs are not 100 percent set on the horsemen of apocalypse the word is they want a female on the team, so Sunfire as a third horseman may not be set in stone. Now, other horseman names I'm hearing for candidates for the fourth horseman war. The names are Havoc and Richter. Now, that is all I have for you now. 
All of this seems to be subject to change, so you'll probably want to subscribe to Valley Point to catch all of the latest developments that I'm going to be dropping on you guys. Now, I am flat out, mate, and that means it's frothy time for me, but don't worry. I'll be back. Oh, uh, Drew, so many teams. A spider team potentially coming. A Hellfire Club Hellion team potentially coming. We have that Dawn of X costumes in the game, so maybe that's another team. But I think the one that I'm most excited about is Apocalypse and his Horsemen. So Omega Red is being released as a legendary character. We also probably going to have D uh, Death. Angel has Death as the, one of the Horsemen. Famine may or may not be Sunfire at this point. Maybe another character, but uh, Sunfire does make sense there. War is still the one that I'm uh, confused about. I don't know if Richter... Or Havoc makes sense from a comic standpoint, but we will we will have to see uh, who the devs choose. I, I still it still seems like they're deciding this point. But uh, without further ado, let's go and look at something that may or may not be decided right now, and that is the farming location of the Secret Avengers. Now we do know Maria Hill has been added to the War Store last week. Still no indication of Captain Sam and Sharon Carter. We're still looking for them, guys. We need Omega Red. And I guess if we if we have to update my predictions, I don't think I'm going to update them too much. Sharon Carter, event character, very easy to get the shards for. So I think she's going to go into easy to farm location like the raid store. And Captain Sam, very difficult to obtain. Uh, so probably going to be a very difficult to obtain place. So maybe replacing Phylavel and that Arena Orb exclusive character and Phylavel is coming out. You can start to purchase horror or... A campaign note but i think i'm going to lean towards campaign node for captain sam so that is my predictions for the farming locations of these final two secret avengers members let me know your thoughts on this and let me know your thoughts on these upcoming teams guys what if they came to the game would make you the most excited hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up hit that uh, uh the notification bell so you know as soon as a new video is uploaded check out some of the sponsors raid shadow legends thank you once again for sponsoring this video and i will see you guys next time give me that hulk fist bump before you go and i will see you then valley flying out hopefully i'll see you tomorrow morning in the live stream valley flying 76 on twitch guys Awesome stuff. Have a great rest of your day.